Hello, thank you for watching. Money Matter presents Know What You Owe, Loan on Me, Steps to Repayment. In this presentation, you will learn about student loans, loan repayment, repayment options, and much more. Let's get started. My name is Rachel Mason, and I'm one of CVTC's Student Central Advisors. Our roles are to help students who are undecided about programs or may need help interpreting or taking career assessments, along with my esteemed colleague, Katie Beck. We are highly trained in all things financial aid and financial coaching. During coaching appointments, we can address you and help you with various financial wellness topics. You may hear us talk about moolah. While we can't give you actual moolah, what we can do is reward you for participating in Money Matters events. Each Money Matters activity, such as workshops like this, special events, seminars, online activities, and advising and coaching appointments are assigned a moolah amount. Moolah is like a raffle ticket or entry. The more moolah you earn, the better chance you have of winning prizes. Today you will earn $10 in Lula by watching this workshop presentation and completing the workshop reflection. You can also email us at Money Matters, it's all one word, all lowercase at cvtc.edu with three things that you learned. You are now only $5 away from being entered to win one of the grand prizes that vary from semester to semester. Each semester, Money Matters puts on workshops for various financial wellness topics. Each month is a new topic, and by attending a workshop and recordings do work too, you will earn the $10 in moolah plus be entered to win one of the workshop prizes. If you have at least $15 in moolah, you are eligible for the semester grand prizes as well. So the more moolah you have, the better chance you have of winning. While these might not be the workshop and semester prizes for the semester that you are attending or watching this presentation, you can check out all up-to-date workshops, the times, and prizes by checking out the Money Matters page in the Student Commons under the Pay for College tab. These are just a few, and I'm going to emphasize a few of our past Money Matters winners. For over six years, we have had thousands of students win prizes for attending various Money Matters events. In the past, we have had students win Roombas, grills, outdoor patio sets, hundreds of dollars in gift cards, country jam tickets, espresso machines, and much more. Now let's learn about student loan repayment. We will start with some terminology that will probably come up during the presentation or terminology that you might have heard relating to student loans and repayment. This can be a pretty dense presentation, so please don't hesitate to email us or reach out with any questions. So you're going to hear these terms administrative forbearance, default, deferment, delinquency, direct subsidized loan, discharge, exit loan counseling federal loan servicers, forbearance, grace period, interest, loan cancellation, loan discharge, loan forgiveness, and unsubsidized loan. And we'll dive into more of these in the presentation. What are federal loan servicers? They are a company that manages your federal student loans. Currently, the DOE, or Department of Education, uses seven different companies. Loan servicers handle the billing, repayment options, and any other information related to student loans. The seven right now is Ed Financial, Mohella, Advantage, Nelnet, Osla Servicing, ECSI, and Default Resolution Group. While your loan be, may be managed by a separate company, they are only the loan servicers and do not own the loan. They act as the middleman between you and your lender. They have only limited authority to make changes to your loans. They can't, for example, change the interest rate on your federal student loans. You can find out who your loan servicer is by going to the National Student Loan Data System and then logging in with your FSA ID. Your loan servicer is assigned to you by the U.S. Department of Education, the DOE, and it may change during the life of your loan. Additionally, multiple loans you may take out may mean you have multiple loan servicers. So also speaking of messengers, did you know that CVT does, CVTC does not handle your loans? 
Yes, that is true. We are the messengers between you and the U.S. Department of Education. The Department of Education are the ones who grant you the numbers for your loans and other financial aid. They pay out the loans to CBTC to disperse to you. And then your loan servicer that's assigned by the Department of Ed will handle all of your loan repayment and questions. So there's a lot of information, but to really find out who your loan servicer is and they'll be the ones to work with you on billing and repayment is going to that National Student Loan Data System and then logging in with your FSA ID. Grace period is a set period after you graduate, you leave school or drop below half time enrollment before you must begin repayment on your loan or loans. The grace period gives you time to get financially settled and select your repayment plan. Not all federal student loans have a grace period. Note that for most loans, interest will accrue during your grace period. Deferment is a temporary postponement of payment on a loan that is allowed under certain conditions. During times of deferment, subsidized federal student loans have no interest. However, the federal unsubsidized loan will still have the interest um, accrue. And this is typically if you would go back to school, you can work with your loan servicer on a deferment to defer any payments while you're continuing your education. Similar to deferment, forbearance is a benefit of federal student loans that allows you to temporarily stop making payments or reduce your federal student loan monthly payment. Interest will continue to be charged on your subsidized, unsubsidized, and parent plus loans if your parents took those out. Some forbearances are required to be granted by your federal loan servicer. Others are only offered at the discretion of your federal loan servicer. During a forbearance, you are responsible for paying the interest that accrues on all types of federal student loans. Your loan servicer decides whether or not to grant a request for a general forbearance. Since student loan debt is extremely difficult to get discharged even in bankruptcy, it's best to work with your student loan servicer or the lender to keep your loan in good standing during tough financial times, especially if you may want to refinance in the future. Federal student loan forbearance suspends loan payments, similar to a deferment, or reduces them temporarily. So the forbearance basically allows the borrowers like you to skip loan payments without becoming delinquent, an important protection for someone facing temporary financial hardship. However, misuse of forbearance through consecutive or long-term periods in forbearance goes against its purpose, and its purpose is to provide short-term relief. Interest continues to accumulate on loans and forbearance, including subsidized loans, unless you pay the interest during the forbearance period. Deferment versus forbearance. Those sound the same, you may say. There are some differences though. The main difference is time, qualifications, and interest. If you were, re were to return to school, you would request a deferment through your loan servicer. If you were going through difficult financial times, you could request a forbearance from your loan servicer. Just remember the difference in interest accruing versus not accruing. No matter what you choose, it will not affect your credit score. So I'll leave this up for a little bit if you want to take a screenshot or look at this to kind of get the difference between deferment and forbearance. Delinquency is a missed payment on your student loan or loans. The first day you miss your required payment, you are now considered delinquent. Your loan lender is required to report delinquency to at least one of the national credit bureaus. If you are delinquent on your student loan payment for 90 days or more, so about three months, your loan servicer will report the delinquency to the three major national credit bureaus. If you continue to be delinquent, your loan can risk going into default. If you have a poor credit rating, it may be difficult for you to obtain credit cards, home or car loans, or other forms of consumer credit. You may also be charged a higher interest rate than someone with a good credit rating. You also may have trouble signing up for utilities, getting homeowners insurance, getting a cell plan, or getting approval to rent an apartment. So it's very important to not be late on those payments. And if that would happen, or you think you're not gonna make it, to reach out to your loan servicer beforehand to help with that because 
you know, being delinquent, your loans can risk going into default and getting it bumped on your credit score. As mentioned in the previous slide about delinquency, if you continue to be delinquent in your payments, your loan will go into default. You would go into default status if there is a payment, if there's no payment made in 270 days. These accounts are then turned over to a collection agency. The consequences of default can not only impact your ability to borrow, but can impact your personal finances as well. Consequences include the following. The entire unpaid balance of your loan and interest you owe becomes immediately due. This is called acceleration. You can no longer receive deferment or forbearance and you will lose eligibility for other benefits, such as the ability to choose a repayment plan. You will lose eligibility for additional federal student aid if you would go back to school. The default is reported to all credit bureaus. Your tax refunds and federal benefit payments may be withheld and then applied toward repayment of your defaulted loan. Your wages may be garnished, and that means that your employer may or will be required to withhold a portion of your pay and then send it to your loan servicer to repay your defaulted loan. And you also may be charged court costs, collection fees, attorney fees, and other costs associated with the collection process. So again, it's very important to not have your loan go into default. Um, if you're thinking it's going to be late, we want it to get it before the delinquency because there are consequences for not paying your student loans. There are three steps to loan repayment, and that's including the loan exit counseling, loan servicing, and repayment plans. So the step one is the loan exit counseling. Similar to the loan entrance counseling that is required for borrowers to take out their loan at the beginning, it's an interactive learning module, and it's for borrowers that are graduating or entering the grace period or repayment for any other reason. You may also get this if you drop below six credits or withdraw from the term. If you plan to be less than half time the next semester, you may need to do a loan exit counseling as you may have to make a payment. You will need to check this on your own. We are required to send this information if you are not half time or you are below half time. So you may get this email while you're, or email from our financial aid office while you're in school, but it's important to see why you may have gotten it. Are you graduating? Did you withdraw? Did you do an unofficial withdraw? Are you going below six credits? So step two is the loan servicing or loan servicer. Earlier we said it's company that manages billing, the repayment, and other information related to your student loans. Any specific questions you have relating to your loan should go through your servicer, not CVTC. We will direct you to your loan servicer. And information about your servicer is on your federal aid dashboard. On your FSA dashboard, you will be able to find your servicer and either set up an online account or at least find their contact information. If you have student loans for more than one semester, you may have different loan servicers, so keep an eye out for that. This is just an example of what your student aid dashboard may look like when you get logged in. Everyone is different, so everyone's going to look different. But here you can see how much you've borrowed in loans and the amounts of grants you have received. Scholarships will not be listed here. You can also see upcoming payment information and connect to your loan servicer. If you click on the view details, you can see individual loans you have taken out with the individual principal, accrued interest, current balance, interest rate, and so much more details. The dashboard also has quick links to helpful resources, frequently asked questions, and more. And you can look at this at any time. You do not have to wait until you graduate, drop below six credits, or stop attending school. So it's important to get comfortable with this and know where, what to look for. 
The last step is choosing a repayment plan. There are a handful of different repayment options that will adjust your monthly payment amount, the terms of repayment, and more. You can select a repayment option during your grace period or you may be assigned one. However, this can be changed at any point for free, unless if you remember you are in default or a delinquent. So if you're struggling to pay or have the opportunity to pay more, consider adjusting your plan. The plans are standard, graduated, extended, a revised pay as you earn, um, the traditional pays you earn, income based, income con contingent, and income sensitive. Not everyone qualifies for each plan, and some will mean considerably more interest. So be sure to read the description of each plan before you choose or talk to a loan server representative. Next, we will watch a short video discussing the different plans. So there is a really short video that discusses the different plans and explains them so well. Unfortunately, when we record these, we've noticed that when we are presenting in PowerPoint or our presentation platform and we click, click play, it does not record the outside video. So here is the QR code to the video. Um, take a screenshot or a picture, come back to this and watch it because it is so powerful. It'll help you describe or learn about the different payment plans and see what's the best option is for you. So we included step four, and you may have noticed that it wasn't on the traditional one to three steps. Um, it's important to know that this is not always a choice for student loan repayment, but it's important that these options are discussed. There are four different methods of eliminating your student loans. One of those options is cancellation and forgiveness. If you're no longer required to make payments on your loans due to your job, this is generally called forgiveness or cancellation. So one of the cancellations is the public student loan forgiveness. And this can happen if you are employed by a government or not-for-profit organization, and you may be able to receive a loan forgiveness under the Public Service Loan Forgiveness or PSLF program. To qualify for this, you must be employed by a U.S. federal, state, local, or tribal government or not-for-profit organization. The federal service does include U.S. military. You have to work full-time for that agency or organization, have direct loans, or consolidate other federal student loans into a direct loan, repay your loans under an income-driven repayment plan, and make 120 qualifying payments. So if you do work for one of these organizations or agencies, it is good to work with your human resources department to see if you qualify, and then also reaching out to your loan servicer to start those repayment options so you do qualify to help get those loans forgiven. There's also a teacher loan forgiveness. So you're, if you are teaching or that's your degree, and that means if you teach full time for five complete and consecutive academic years in a low income school or educational service agency, and you meet those other qualifications, you may be eligible for forgiveness of up to $17,500 on your direct subsidized and unsubsidized loans. So if you are in the teaching field and you are working full time for five years in a low income elementary school, secondary school, or educational service agency and you are teaching, this is something you should look into to have some of that student loan forgiven. Discharging your student loans means you are no longer required to make payments on your loans due to other circumstances. Um, one is disability. There are different disabilities and different discharges. There's total and permanent disability dis discharge, discharge due to death, discharge in bankruptcy, Perkin loan cancellation and discharge, and closed school discharge. In the next couple slides, we'll talk more in depth about these discharges and what they mean. So a total and permanent disability discharge means that if you're totally and permanently disabled, you may 
qualify for discharge of your federal student loans. And how do I know if I qualify for a TPD discharge? You can show that you qualify for a TPD discharge by providing documentation from one of three sources. So if you are working with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, VA, you can sign off on that if you have a disability or permanent discharge. The Social Security Administration, the SSA can also sign it. And a big main one that a lot of students we see is a physician. There's certain paperwork that the Department of Veterans Affairs, the Social Security Administration, and a physician or doctor needs to sign. Um, not a lot of people do get the, a total and permanent disability discharge, but if that does happen, it is an option. So we wanted to make you known of that. If a school closes down while a student is attending or shortly after leaving or graduating, your student loans may be discharged if certain quality criteria is met. So one of the most recent cases you may have heard of is Globe University. So while yes, the student loans may have been forgiven, a lot of the time, and actually most of the time now, credits that students took at these colleges do not transfer to other colleges. So you are starting over. So yes, you have no loans, but you would have to be starting over and taking out loans to kind of redo your schooling that you took previously. While we hope this does not happen, you can have your student loans forgiven due to the death of the borrower or of the student on whose behalf a PLUS loan was taken out by a parent. This means family members, spouse, um, are not responsible for paying these back. There's forms that you have to fill or your family would have to fill out and I'd be having them reach out to your loan servicer who then gets things signed by the college you're attending and other, you know, death certificates to get your loans forgiven. Didn't I tell you earlier that it was not possible to get your student loans cleared if you filed for bankruptcy? For the most part, this is true, but in very, very rare cases, you could have your federal student loans discharged after declaring bankru bankruptcy. However, discharge in bankruptcy is not an automatic process. While it is far from impossible to get student loan debt canceled through bankruptcy under current law, um, it is not easy. A student loan borrower seeking to discharge their loans in bankruptcy court must initiate an adversary proceeding. Essentially, they must sue their student loan lender in a bankruptcy court to prove that they meet the standard. In most cases, the student loan lenders, like the loan servicers, and including the U.S. Department of Education and U.S. Department of Justice, will then oppose the borrower. Adversary proceedings can be a long, exhausting, and if the borrower hires private legal counsel, expenses expensive, which can itself cut against their undue hardship argument. So while in very rare cases it can be discharged, you'd be spending far more time and money because your loan servicer and the federal government is going to prolong this as long as they can. So you'd be paying more in legal fees than it would possibly for your student loans. So private companies may contact you with offers to help you with your student loans for a fee. The U.S. Department of Education and Loan Servicers will help you for free. This is, there is a great program through Ascendium called Grad Ready that provides you with video lessons, helpful resources, tools, and tips to help you succeed, including paying for college, money management, real world finance, learning to learn, and life skills for success. This is all for free, and it is on our Money Matters page in the Student Commons under the Pay for College tab. This was a very dense, we did say that at the beginning, presentation, but it's so important to know about your student loans and student loan repayments. If you have more specific questions regarding your student loans or maybe need help figuring out who your student loan servicer is or have any other just basic questions, please let us know. We might and most likely will refer you to a student loan servicer just as 
we do not work with loans or loan servicers, and we are trained to guide you out to those student loan servicers, we can help with a very basic information and then you'd be working with your loan servicer and finding the repayment options that work best for you and if you have any other questions please meet with a student central advisor so katie or i we can assist you with you know different financial literacy topics general financial aid guide you to outside resources help you set up accounts with like grad ready to make sure that you are fully understanding student loan, student loan forgiveness, and anything in between. If you're thinking maybe going on to school to another four year or returning to an associate degree and getting more education, we can also assist with program decision and career planning. It's a safe space to learn, discuss, ask questions. You will also earn $10 in moolah at your first financial coaching appointment so then by watching this video and then meeting with us you now have twenty dollars in moolah to be entered to win those grand semester prizes and you'll also get a fun money matters swag gift that we'd love to hand out for meeting with us so again thank you so much for watching this presentation we hope you learned something um, and have the best student loan repayment possible